Welcome to Friday Teacher. In this video, we will understand classes and objects in the Dart. So without wasting time, let's get started. What is basically a class? A class is blueprint of an object. Then what is the object? Object is an instance of class. The concept class and objects are interrelated with each other. We can also say an object is the real world entity. So whatever thing that you see in the real world is actually an object. For example, the book, the pen, pencil, customers, employees, all these are the objects. Consider you are creating a software or application for specific college or the school. In this case, the student, staff or the teachers, exam, results, assignments, all these things are actually the objects. Just imagine that house is actually an object. So before we construct the house, what we have to do? We have to construct the map that is the blueprint for this specific house. So in this case, the map or the blueprint that you create before constructing your house is actually a class. So I'm just trying to explain that the map that we create is actually acts as a class and whatever house that you construct using this particular map is actually an object. Thus I can say class is the logical view of an object. We can also say class is actually a template that determines the properties and behavior of an object. Let's say we have the map. Using this map, we can determine how many rooms are there in the house, how many doors, how many windows will be there in the house, and what is the type of room structure inside this house. So all these properties and behavior can be determined just by looking at this map. So in this case, the class is actually a template that contains the properties that is the data and behavior means the methods inside the class determines the behavior of an object. And we can also say class is the user defined data type. I must say class is actually a data structure that allows us to encapsulate the data and the methods that performs operations over the data in order to keep it secure from outside the world. Let's look at the syntax for creating class in the Dart. In order to create a class that is given keyword called class, thereafter we have to specify name of the class. A class name in Dart always starts with capital letters. In case of multiple words, the first letter of each next word is written in capital letters. The definition of class is enclosed within opening curly bracket to closing curly bracket. Class basically contains the fields, that is the variables. So it might be a static variable or it might be the instance variable. It contains the method. It can also be an instance method or it can be a static method. Then we can have the constructors. We can have the getters and the setters. Look at this example. I have a class for student having two different fields, roll number and the name and having one method called study. Let's look at the syntax for creating an object. For this, we have to specify class name, then reference name is equals to the class name along with the pair of parentheses. The class name and parentheses that we specified here is actually the constructor. From that too, it's optional to specify new keyword while creating an object. Just look at this example. Here we have class called student and in order to create the object of the student class, I can simply write student as is equals to student or I can write student as is equals to new student. So in this case, the student that I have written here is actually the name of class. The as is the reference or you can say the variable that stores the address or hash code of an object and the student with bracket is actually the constructor that the student class will have. Let me create a class called person that contains two different fields such as string name and int age. For this name and age, dartpad is giving me an error. The simple reason here is these variables are the non valuable variable that is for this variable assigning value is compulsory. So in this case, I must provide a constructor. A second option, I can make this variable late and I can assign this variable later on. And the third option is I can make this variable as a nullable by the specifying a question mark so that it allows me to assign the null values in the name and age. If you don't know about what is nullable and non-nullable variable, I recommend you guys to go ahead and watch my videos where I talked about null safety in the dark. 
let me define a method say void set data that gets the data and assigns data to the name and age so i can write here string n that gets the value for name and in a that gets the value for age and simply i can write name is equals to n and age is equals to n let me define a method that displays the data so i will name this one as a show data and it will simply print the data like say name is equals to the value of name and i can simply write the age is equals to the value of age the name and age that i have specified inside this person class are called as the fields or instance variables the set data and show data these are the functions inside the class so instead of calling functions inside the class we actually call them as a methods now let me define one object in the main so i can write like person p1 is equals to person and i can set the data for this one so i can write p1 dot set data let's say i will write the value of name as sam and age say 24 and i can simply write p1 dot show data so this will simply print data for this p1 object and when i run this program you can see it gives me output the name of the value for name is sam and the value for age is 24. let me create one more object let's say person p2 is equals to person and i can specify the value for person using p2 dot set data in this case i will pass the value for name as a mark and value for age say 32 and let me print the values for this object p2 using p2 dot show data and when i run this program first of all it will show me the values for this p1 sam and the 24 and the value for name mark and 32 age is actually the value of this object p2 now let's understand what happens behind the screen step by step in this program when line number 2 is executed this will construct a new person object in the memory like this and this person object will have two different fields that is the name and the age obviously the value for this in name and age are null because i have used the nullable variable here and as this p1 is a reference variable here so p1 reference will be created and address of this particular object will be assigned inside this reference called p1 when line number 3 is executed in this case the object p1 is actually the invoking object over this invoking object p1 the method set data will be called that is the execution of set data will start here in this case the sam is will be stored inside the variable n and the 24 will be stored inside the variable a and using this assignment the value sam will be assigned inside name and the value 24 will be assigned inside the age so that inside this object i will have the value sam for the name and 24 value for the age that's the reason for line number four when i'm invoking p1.show data so in this case also p1 is invoking object over which show data will be called so that the execution of show data will start and this will simply print the value of name and age over the screen in this case the value of name will be sam for p1 and value of age will be 32 so this is how i will get the output for this particular object called p1 so p2 when line number six is executed again new object of this person class will be created like this and this will also have two different fields that is the name and the age so let me write here properly the name and the next one is age obviously it will be blank because i have used the nullable variable here and now the reference of this that is the address of this will be stored inside the another reference variable called p2 so the hash code will be assigned inside this variable called p2 in line number seven i'm calling p2 dot set data so in this case p2 is an invoking object over which set data will be called and the value mark will be assigned inside this variable n and the 32 will be assigned inside this a so this will perform the assignment of the value mark in the name and 32 inside the age that's the reason mark will be assigned inside the name and 32 will be assigned inside the age of this particular p2 and when line number 8 is executed again p2 is an invoking object 
for which show data method will, will be invoked and the show data will simply print the value of name and age on the screen and that prints the mark and 32 for the object p2 that's it for this video if you really like the way i am explaining the concept then don't forget to like share subscribe and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos